Okay, in this presentation what we're going to do is look at a confidence interval for a proportion, a single sample proportion. Now, so let's just sort of get us started here. So let's go to the next page. Let's just click it on. It's just a little bit slow. Okay, so here's an example we're going to work with. Okay, the strength of dosage of a plant growth chemical is often measured by the proportion, okay, of plants that grow faster, okay. Just actually a sort of remark there, sometimes you're not actually explicitly told if it's a mean or proportion, so sometimes you have to little uh, dig it out a bit, okay, so that's important. Is it a mean or proportion that you're actually asked, okay? Now here it was sort of obvious because this is, you know, proportions is the name of the video, but sometimes it's not immediately obvious and you have to tease it out. Is it a mean measurement or a proportion? Number of successes out of certain number of cases. Just always think like that, okay? Because again, you're not almost always told immediately what what you're asked to do. So, a more data information here. A particular dosage is fed to 240 of these plants. Okay, that's our sample size, okay? And 150 plants actually showed uh, displayed faster growth. Okay, so we actually, it's a bit clearer now we have a proportion. We're dealing here with proportions. How many successes, okay, over total number of cases, okay? So sometimes it's not immediately obvious, so you have to sort of tease it out. And that sort of tells us this is proportions, okay? Successes over total number of cases, uh, or number of occurrences over total number of cases, you know, so anyway. A calculated point estimate, P hat, for the proportion of plants that will grow faster due to this chemical. Okay, so P hat is, we actually had seen it in the last example there, it was 150 over 240, and that is, using a bit of calculator work, 0.625. If you decide to use percentages, you would have 62.5%, okay? Now, so that's the calculated point estimate. That would be the first question there, and that leads us up to, the next question is, let's say this is part two, what is the standard error to be used in the uh, calculation of the confidence interval? This is important because you would use a different formulation for the standard error if you're doing a hypothesis test. So we're actually calculating a, uh, a, a, a confidence interval. Okay, so there's a different standard error to be used when hypothesis testing. So if you want to just check your formula sheet and actually uh, see is that the case, yes it is, okay? So for this particular example, uh, so we're doing a confidence interval question here. So let, make sure you were using the one for confidence intervals, not hypothesis testing. Although there, um, we, I didn't give you any information to do hypothesis testing. Uh, okay, so anyway. So the, the formula would be the standard error for proportion is the square root of p hat times 1 minus p hat all over n, okay? Or if you want to use uh, percentages, you just make that 100, okay? Now I'm going to use percentages because I think it's just slightly easier to do in an exam situation. You can use mix, uh, use one or the other. p hat was 62.5. Uh, 100 minus p hat is 100 minus 62.5. That is 37.5, okay? And we're going to divide that by 240. Okay, so let's just get this straight. This is uh, working out in the calculator, 2343.75 divided by 240. That is equal to the square root of 9.765, which in... Uh, I make that to be 3.125, there or thereabouts. I, let, I have a little bit of rounding error going on. Okay, so according to my calculations, the standard error is 3.125%. Okay, okay. Now, um, yeah, so it should be around, at, you know, depending on the question, you should end up with a value between, let's say, 2% for a really large sample and 5% for a really small sample. 
or a smallish sample, like 50 or something like that. So the important thing there is do not use the wrong um, formula for the um, standard error. Although in this case, actually, be it's actually more of a problem if you're actually doing hypothesis testing, really. So it's actually not a problem here, but it's actually if you're doing hypothesis testing, um, you would actually uh, you might actually use inadvertently use this formula when you should use the other formula but that's really a problem for the other question but it might might be worth highlighting here anyway go back to where we are 3.125 so what is the 95 percent confidence interval so i broke this question up into multiple parts just to make it a little bit easier to follow so essentially the general structure let's just remind ourselves of this the general structure of a confidence interval is the point estimate plus or minus a quantile times standard error Okay, so we have our uh, point estimate here. I'll just write it in as 62.5 percent, plus or minus our quantile. I'll just come back to that shortly. Okay, times our standard error, 3.125 percent. My pen is acting up. Do we have it back? It's what 3.125. Just give it a second there. Now the quantile is something I'm interested in now. Uh, just actually remark. It's 95% confidence, and we have a large sample, okay? Now, um, if you're not sure where this comes from, this is not the time to explain it, but you should end up with a value here. Or you should, when you learn what this process is, you should end up with the value of 1.96. Okay, so 95% confidence. It's a confidence interval, which is always a two-tailed procedure, if that helps. Uh, also, actually, you never really, sm it's almost unheard of to see small samples in the case of proportions, particularly in undergraduate statistics. It's not impossible, obviously, but like, it's really, really weird. Anyway, so essentially what we have to do now is just put, piece that all together, and let's just finally state our answer. It is... 56.375% to 68.625%. Okay, and essentially what we're saying here is that if we are using this chemical, we expect it at least 56% of the uh, chemicals or the plants to grow faster and it's probably as much as 68 percent essentially we're 95 percent sure that the true proportion uh that will grow faster is in between those two numbers that's the correct interpretation but you know you can even sort of slightly inaccurate interpretations of what the confidence interval is they are that you know they still sort of can be quite illuminating okay uh, that's why i love confidence intervals okay 